Hey, we did it. Yeah, finally uh, got you a new adapter, so your camera works. Hey, everybody, uh, welcome to Hey Man, I'm Josh Wolf. I am Jacob Wolf. We are in Providence, Rhode Island at the Comedy Connection. Um, and listen, a couple things real quick. Um, so Jacob will be moving to Vegas. Correct. So we'll finally have a podcast studio. Yep. And so until then, this is what it'll be in the different hotel rooms leading up to that. Yep. Because we'll be together almost every weekend. If we need to double some weeks up, we will. Um, but so better quality standard studio coming your way. But right now, this is what we got. Yeah. And uh, so we um, – Last week we started by going over the, our Australia New Zealand trip, but we also recorded for about three and a half hours and only got thirty five minutes worth of stuff because audio and technical issues and stuff like that. So instead of doing two cities per podcast and doing four of them, we're going to run through all of it in this hour. So keep up, <laughs> right? We. I mean, I can be a bit long-winded. I'll blame this on me. So we were – I think we only got through one city. We only got through Perth. I know. That's what I'm saying. It's yeah. Like we didn't get through anything. So this is going to be a lot. So we're going to try to just talk about the trip in general. We should go city to city. It might be a better way to remember. Well, we definitely are going to go city to city just so we can remember how our trip went. But we can't spend an hour in each city. Right. Now, I will say this also. Um, we are, we're in Providence right now. Um, last night's late show was one of my favorite ones. Really interesting. I've never been, I've never done a show with you like that before. I was mainly, so usually obviously when you go to a stand up show or a comedy show, you have someone who's got in between an hour and an hour and a half set. And it's something that they do and it's, you know, jokes and stories. And for those of you who have been to a show of his, you know what it looks like. I've never been to a comedy show period, let alone one of yours where there, that late show was emptier and it was not stories it was the crowd asking questions and then him just answering them and then i would come up periodically and answer questions with him but i i've never seen you do a show like that before ever i do them every now and then like if it's a late show and it's not sold out um because so we and this was a thursday night show that we we sold out the all five shows, the Friday, the Thursday, Friday, Friday, Saturday, Saturday. And we added this Thursday night show, late show, um, just for whoever couldn't get tickets if they wanted to come to this late show. Yeah. So it ended up not selling out. And if it's a smaller club, which means a smaller crowd, every now and then I like to just go on stage and just nothing with no nothing planned. Yeah. And just shit, you know, shit around for a while. Well, I mean, yeah, because here's the thing with Here's the thing for people who don't know it. Thursday night, when you get Thursday night shows, at least for us, we know that all of those people are Joshua fans. Yo, because yeah, you're leaving, because you're leaving your house. Yeah. yeah, because you're leaving your house on a Thursday night when you have work tomorrow, presumably, and you're going to stay out late and have some drinks just to see him perform. Yo, so that means listen, we know that you're coming out because you want to see Josh Wolf. Friday and Saturday is kind of a mix because people are like – Yes, absolutely, absolutely. They're Joshua fans, but some of them are like, "Oh, let's just go to a comedy show on a Friday or Saturday but dude, night." But that sh- last night, Thursday night late, was a hundred just straight Joshua fans. But I'll tell you something right now, for sure, a bunch of those people did not have jobs to get up to in the morning. No, 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 no. With how belligerent they were last night, there's no way they were getting it up was at so seven a.m. for a job. I love the drunk. With like the northeastern accent, because I don't hear it so much anymore. Well, to me, it just sounds like a lot of mumbling. Like if they're really belligerent and they have the northeast accent, it just sounds like they're talking with marbles in their mouth. Like that dude in the corner last night who kept flashing you with his phone because his friend had a question to ask. That was crazy. I just kept hearing like grumbling sounds from the left side. I didn't actually hear words. Yeah, I had a really good time at both shows. And and there, look. it's different energy and different. And the first show yesterday was, it was a fucking. Also strange. Yeah. The the club was like, I'm sorry we didn't get to more people to throw them out. I'm like, you would have had to throw everybody out. Yeah. Every and some shows are like that, man. And I love that about stand up. Anyways, 
let's get to this here. So for those of you who don't know, Jacob and I are touring together every week. Um, so if you want to come check us out on the road, we do a lot of Q&A. Go to ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates. Shows have been selling out, guys. I'm beyond grateful at this point in my life to be where I'm at with this dude touring wow. around. Um, so with ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates. We don't have a sponsor for the podcast, so that would where this message is brought to you by us. That would be where this would go. <laughs> Nothing. Um, and so, yeah, I figure we just go through Australia, New Zealand, you know, a little bit, and just so people know what we did. Yeah, I mean, because there, there's going to be some cities we don't have a lot to talk about because we were there for 19 hours. Sydney and and Melbourne. We were in Melbourne for 26 hours. There was yeah, but we walked around. We saw some fucking right. cool ass stores. Right, but still, like we, we didn't still, see enough. No, we weren't there. We were there for the day. We went to bed. We went to the show. We went to bed. We woke up. We flew out. So I got to tell you a lot of things that we got to do. Last time I was in Australia, Melbourne was my absolute favorite. It is from being just there a day. It's the city that I definitely want to go back to. But we have to rewind because we're in Brisbane. We didn't get through Perth. Brisbane oh, so we just the first podcast we just put out was Perth. We had a great time in Perth, man. We Perth, had three days. A lot of people shit on you, but I really liked your city. Probably by the one way, of the best meals, honestly, top three favorite meals. I think all trip. By the way, was in Perth. The people who shit on Perth, Perth, just so you know, are the pe- other people in Australia. Yeah, other people outside the country are like Perth's fine. People in Australia, people in Australia are like fucking Perth. So, so two of my favorite meals were definitely there. Was that place at Hunter and Barrel? In Perth, yeah, so good. With just a tray of meat and a butter chicken. That was fried my nickname rice. in high school. Tray of meat, yeah, bummer. <laughs> and then a butter chicken fried rice, which was fire. But enough of Perth. Perth, thank you so much. You guys were fucking rad. We flew to Brisbane, mm-hmm. not on Jetstar. Thank God. We flew. To, we flew to Brisbane, and uh, yo, Brisbane. What was her name? Shannon. Yes. Shannon met us there. Yo, I like. We're sorry if we got that wrong, but I think it is Shannon. Yeah. I liked – it was months ago. I liked Brisbane. Just last month. We, that first meal we had at the Hearthrow Hotel. Norman's? <laughs> Yours wasn't even close. Was it not start with an H? No. What are you thinking of? Heathrow Airport? That's what it sounded like. The one Hearth- with the horns? Hunter and Barrel was in Perth. No, no, no. But the name of this place was called Norman's Hotel. Oh, yeah. You're right. What did I say? Hearth row. Yeah, that wasn't that either. Definitely not that. But we we were at Norman's. Yep. We had a good steak there. Crazy. Um, I had a Wagyu steak, which was fire. But my only complaint is they cooked it on a grill instead of in a pan. Yo, dude. All the only complaint is that because you lose some flavor when you cook it on a grill. I'm However, not a, I'm not a grill dude either. Yeah, you cook it in a pan with some butter. But you put it on a grill, you're you just losing juice out of it. Yo, I'm telling you right now. And the juice is you, loose. You, you, grill, you grill guys, you can come at me all day. But you grilling a steak, you're fucking it up. Yeah, if, if we're going to have a steak off and you're going to grill it and I'm going to pan fry it, pan sear it, I'm going to win. You're fucking it up. Yeah, 100%. You're, I can just taste your grill. That's it. Also, that's, if you, you know, that's like my you, thing with grill in general. Yeah, you can taste what you've cooked on there if, unless you've cleaned it. You're just, but even if you're not, you're just tasting the the fire. Yeah. Like, also, here's the thing: people are like, "Well, you can still grill it; it tastes just as good as in the pan." No, it doesn't. You ever been to a high end restaurant where you see grill lines on your steak? No, because it's a presentation thing, and because you lose so much of the flavor. You gotta pan sear it, man. Yeah, I pan in the pan, and then if you're gonna do it really nice, you throw it in the oven and you let it bake. I'm gonna say the same thing. Honestly, with burgers. Look, I understand barbecue or having a burger on the grill, but if I had my choice, cook it in the pan. I, but I don't want to taste your grill. And when I say taste your grill, I'm not even saying your grill is dirty. I'm saying, by the way, it sounds dirty, but it isn't. Taste your grill. I want to taste your grill, but it's not. But you're, I'm not saying your grill is dirty. There's little Wayne has a line that says, "Sit on my grill, call it a tailgate." Get it? Because he's got like grills in his teeth. Yeah, it's fire. A yeah. fire line. Is it really a fire line? It's a great bar. It's a great bar. It's a great bar? Yeah, like a bar. Lil Wayne's got some of the best lyrics of all time. No but questions asked. Sit on my grill and we'll call it a barbecue? Is that so what it? Sit on my grill and we'll call it a tailgate because there's also a grill to a car. Yeah. Right? So it's a double entendre. Yeah. Is that a fire bar? Yeah, it is. Fire bar. It's a fire bar. Yes. 
Fire bar. How it's not I, the same. It's not one word. It's two. That's a fire bar. There you go. That's how you said it the first time. Made it sound like you combined the two words. Fire bar. It's a fire bar. That's a fire bar. There you go. What else? Okay. Let me see if I'm saying this right, okay? Okay. okay. Um, it's tricky to rock a rhyme. To rock a rhyme, that's right on time. It's tricky. Is a fire bar. I don't know. He says the same word. How many times? I wouldn't call it a fire bar. I would call it... I would call it. I don't know what I would call it. Tricky. I if, listen, dude. But what he's telling you is he's telling you it's tricky to rock a rhyme. That's right on time. It's tricky. Sure. Fire bar. It's tricky. Fire. Tricky. Fire. Anywho, um, we not were, Parthrow. <laughs> we were at Norman's. Uh, we had a crazy. This is why it takes us uh, seven hours to record a podcast. <laughs> yeah, because you and I have. ADD out the wazoo. Good lord. The only thing that, that makes me sit down and would actually do this without getting yeah. on track is smoking weed, but we're not doing that. Are you looking at me or are you looking at you? Uh, a little bit of both. Mainly I'm looking at me. Yeah, I can't decide. Like sometimes, so right now, what are you looking at? I'm looking at me. You're looking at me. No, I'm looking at the camera. Don't look at the camera. Don't look at the camera? No, I never look at the camera. What does it look like I'm looking at right now? For those of you who listen to this, it's probably you're probably like because now I'm looking at you. If you're looking at the camera, but I'm looking at you. Are you looking at me? I'm looking at you. You're yeah. looking at. So it looks like. Oh yeah, he uh, yeah. does. That's what I'm saying. It looks like we're just kind of looking into whoever's talking to us. But then if I look at you, I look like I'm looking straight because you're on my side. Right. But if I'm looking at me, it looks like I'm looking across. Straight. Well, look at you. I am. Look at me. That's yeah, pretty subtle. Weird. <laughs> but it's not that big of a deal. Anywho. So we got to Norman's. Um, we did actually, however, have to change hotels in Brisbane yep. late night. Yep. Not for anybody's fault except his. Um, ho- the, the place we stayed at was like was really nice, the first place we got to. Um, but I, I, I liked the layout of the building. I liked the, uh, I liked the actual room we were in too. It just uh, – you know, he's got some mold issues. Yeah, I got some mold issues, so I can't be in any place that's kind of moldy. He's got to stay in a place that's, that's got a HVAC, any HVAC issues. But also, I hated the gym. You also didn't like it, though, because you said it felt a little bro But also, we were the staying. gym? Yeah. But also, Super bro Right, but we were also staying at a place. It was practically like a B&B. It was like a hotel, but also like an Airbnb. I so think like, it was an apartment complex and a hotel. Right, so that was people's home. That's where they live. Yeah, that's man. where they work so out. So that's cool, but I don't want to have to live there when they are. I didn't mind it. I don't like – I used to, but I do not like a heavy bro gym. I don't like a lot of weights dropping. Well, there was no power lifters in there. There was like nothing dropping in there. They were – weights were dropping. What weights? I was sitting next to them the entire There's time. weight droppers. He's just going to keep saying it. Um, um, yeah. <laughs> anyways, <laughs> but so we switched up and we ended up at the Vo- Vo- Voco? I don't know. Wasn't that the one with the – I don't know the name of it. I think it was the it was Voco. Like three weeks ago. A month ago. I think it was called the Voco. How many hotels um, we've been in since then? I can't remember the name of that fucking wow, hotel. Fucking lot. <sighs> a lot. Voco? Yeah, I think sure. so. Let's I think go so. with Voco. Because we switched, and it was that same river view, yeah, right? Yeah, Um Giant Ferris wheel. Yeah, I really enjoy, I enjoyed that restaurant. It had a small arcade on the second floor as well. Um, but listen, if we're going to do every city, we don't need to – I don't think we need to go into every little detail. Well, I was just, just naming small things real quick and then going on because okay. I was just about to get to the show. You want to talk about the city at all? I liked walking around that city. Brisbane was cool. I really enjoyed and it. That sneaker store went Cool to. sneaker store. Shout out my man. Uh, Thomas? Tom. Tom Tommy, Stark. No, no, no. It was – no, it wasn't Stark. It was – oh, no, was it? Yeah, yeah. Steve yeah. Rogers? No, no, you're right. Because it wasn't Tony Stark. It's Tommy Stark. That's right. That's yeah, right. so his name was Tommy. Shout out my guy Tommy. He owned a uh, – or had a, a store out there in Brisbane and then found me some dope-ass shoes, which I actually have with me, um, and for a legit price. So you guys never anything, anything out there. Uh, blanket.au is their Instagram or as a guy's Instagram. will help you get those shoes. So check them out. Um, I, I, Brisbane was the cra- – Brisbane for me was the first – Show okay, so there's been a diff, a definitely a different um, energy following the tour dates, 
Right. Even in the States, it's been different. It's yep. been like, whoa, this is different. This feels different. And um, uh, Brisbane was the first sold out sa- thousand seat place that I've ever gone into and just sold. And I know for a lot of dudes touring that you're like a thousand. I'm like, is that it? But thousands it, bigger than a lot more than you, you think. Yo, dude, it is blows my fucking mind that a thousand separate people were like, you know what we should do tonight? Go see, see Josh Wolf. Yeah. More yeah. than a thousand, by the way, because some showed up after for a different show. Yeah, for a second show that because we originally were at a comedy club and they had added a second show. But then the tickets just kept going to where they moved us to somewhere called Recobite Hall. And, and yeah. no, that's not Recobite. It was uh, the music, the Fortitude. Sorry, yeah, Fortitude, Fortitude Music Fortitude yeah. Music Hall. And then those people who bought tickets to the late show did not get an email or an update about the show getting moved. So about 40 people showed up after the show just to take a photo because they had that missed was, the entire show. So good. that That's show crazy. was so crazy and humbling and like that woman on the front row who had to go to the hospital after but decided to stay for the show. Crazy. We gave her, we signed our we, we signed the, the guitar, guitar and gave her that guitar. Yep. But guys, I I mean like that was the first one I had a moment after the show. Excuse me, upstairs in the green room when oh. you when you were already downstairs. This dude, man. I wanted to meet as many people as possible, so I came down before everyone to just be like, "Hey, yo!" I, when we when I got, but I had a moment upstairs where I, I didn't cry, but I didn't not cry. Single teardrop. Yeah, but it was just so emotional. I mean, listen, I, I here's here's where I'm at in my life. I am fully aware and fully confident. And you guys can take this how you want, but you know me. Of, I actually think that I'm. Not only am I, I I'm I'm good at what I do. Yeah. So I'm not surprised that people are having a good time anymore. But, I used to be very self-deprecating, and honestly, there was a point in time where people come in where I wasn't that good. During Chelsea lately, we sold a bunch of tickets, but I feel bad for everybody who came to see those shows because they were, nah, you know. Well, well. But I feel really – and people say deserve. I don't live in the world that deserve. I don't think one person deserves more than another for any particular reason. But I, I am now fully confident that if you come to my show – You're going to have a good time. You're going to have a good time. A hundred percent. But it doesn't escape me how old I am and to be ascending – at my age is like fucking yeah i'd like to add also a thousand seven people left their house to come see you on the other side of the planet yeah dude on like a wednesday or some shit on the other side of the fucking planet yeah it blew it fucking it blew you guys it in brisbane were six were like 18 hours ahead time wise of where we live we were a day ahead like the fact that people showed up was crazy yeah 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 it blew me away anyways so I had a little moment upstairs, but yep. this dude was downstairs saying, hey, everybody. Chiki, chiki, chiki. When I came out to do a meet and greet, there weren't very many people. Half the people were gone. Because they were all up in front taking pictures with him. I'm like, where's the meet? They were like, they're up taking pictures with Jacob. Well, I tried to bring you into that room because it had better light. And instead, you started, decided to like sit in Batman's cave in the front room. It was so dark. I didn't know there was an option. That's why I kept it. Oh, never mind. But Fortitude was awesome. Um, I'm trying to think of what other meals we had there. That, that steak at Fortitude was – and Fortitude didn't serve it. It was from down the street. Yeah, yeah. I think it was Elements Bar and Grill. I think is what it was called. Okay, then I'm not going to comment on the steak. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, listen. Here's what we're going to do, dude. In the future, moving forward. Not name the bars? If it's good, name it. If it's not good, we're not going to name it. Cool. Okay. <laughs> I was just trying to give credit what credit was due. Yeah, but Elements some, is not a credit because they the had a lot of was good, fucking they had some good beer, though. They had a lot of beer. Okay. I'm a beer guy. Um, yeah, I, I am, I'm not. Nope. You're not a drinker. You had a bunch of beer in Australia, different beers, though. Yeah, I liked it. Well, I had a couple that I, I used as my go tos. Like, if I go to London, like, there's a couple, like, Peronis and a, and a I think it's 1776. No, 16. What is it? It's another German beer. Can't, it's it's a it's a date. It's a number. Can't remember what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's very good. Um, trying to think of what other meals we had though. I don't. 
At, at, in Brisbane? We were there for two and a half days. I know, man, but we walked that city. We must have walked. Oh, it's where you it's where you discovered your halloumi cheese, isn't it? Maybe. I must have walked 14 miles. Yeah, we had a good time there. There was a lot of good spots out there. We had a lot of good – a lot of cool, like, uh, sneaker stores, a lot of cool culture stores. Uh, I will tell you, man. Parish sitting in Foot Locker, which was dope. Yeah, there was some um, – there were some weird sounding, uh, was that New Zealand, the birds? Oh, the, the very angry ones? Yeah, it was uh, in Auckland. Yeah, that was, but Brisbane, we went down, they had these geckos that were running crazy in the botanical gardens at, that um, Jacob. Giant geckos. Giant geckos. That's not a gecko. What is it? It's a, it is an iguana or a lizard. Yeah, it looked a little bigger than a gecko. Geckos are like the size of my hand. Yeah, that lizard thing. was like the size of my arm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was big. I, and you touched it one of them on the tail. I did grab its tail. I was so far expecting it to turn around and try and bite me. It didn't. didn't even move. Yeah. That's why I'm left. Because if you go and touch an animal and you grab its tail and it doesn't move, it means it's not scared of you. And you know what? That means you should be scared of it. By the way, legit dinosaur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Look, looked like a legit dinosaur. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, did we tell everybody that you packed a separate suitcase for your sneakers? It wasn't a suitcase. It was a duffel bag. But yes, I did pack a whole separate duffel bag for my shoes. Because for a couple of reasons. One, we were gone for two and a half weeks. You think I'm just going to survive with four pairs of shoes in my other bag? Yeah, like a normal human would. Nope. Also, that suitcase would have been way overweight even with the shoes in it. So I packed three light pairs of shoes in that, and then I had a duffel bag full of four pairs of shoes. So I had probably seven or eight pairs of shoes. Did you change shoes when we were on the plane? No. Didn't change shoes when we were on the plane. I usually wore the same pair to every day for flying, but I tried to wear a different pair for the shows. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, dude, your outfits were always pretty. Yeah, you, but you know me, though. I, I, I'm not I'm not stale when it comes to the shoes or the, or the outfits on stage. I always try to do something a little – a little color coordinated, but also like a little, a little spice in it. You know, a little what? A little spice. A little spicy spice. Oh, spice. Yeah. S p i c e. Spice. A little spice. A little spice. Are you are you spinning fresh bars? No, just spice. Yeah. <laughs> you know, rocket power. Like wiggity wiggity wiggity. Oh, you know? did you? Were you were a little too young for that cartoon, weren't you? No. Rocket power. Yeah. We were watching that with your brother and sister. It still came on when I was a kid. Yeah, but you were like three when we were watching that. Weedy. What other do you remember watching Doug? Yep, I remember watching Doug. I remember I remember a lot of things. There are a lot of good TV shows. Remember watching Hey Arnold? Oh dude. Hey Arnold was my fucking favorite. It's a good show. It's still a good show. I remember watching that with you guys. Yeah. And and you guys were just <sighs> The one thing about watching, like, even if you find something that you like to watch with your kids. Kids won't shut the fuck up long. You can't nope. watch the show because, like, mid show, they'll just just start being like, "Do you know I thought I saw a gorilla?" And, and you'd be like, "What are we talking about right now?" I saw a gorilla. Yeah, but just, they just start talking about random stuff. That's true. It does happen. How come it looks a lot of times like I'm high, but I'm not? I was going to say the same thing. You do seem semi high, and I know you're not though. Yeah, that is crazy. Like right now, if I looked at me, which I am, <laughs> <laughs> I look high. Are you tired? Yeah, I'm I got tired. I got up at five in the morning. I'm tired. That means you got up at two a.m. our time. I'm gonna use my snorrel mask and take a. He has this thing that he, it's a weighted like it's pretty much just a bean a, bag. A bean bag. It's like it's like a cornhole bag, but Tell it's like rectangular instead of square. So he just puts it over his eyes, and then he wears a beanie to sleep. And he puts it over his beanie so it stays on his face, and he's snoring within eight seconds. Tell him what it's like, because I made him. I made him stay in every like. It the name of our tour should be one room two beds, because I make or two dudes one room. Two dudes one room. I make him stay in the room that I'm in. Yep. And um, yo, I would just that's normal, Masso, dude. I'm telling you right now. I'm gonna start selling something called a Snorro mask, and I'm gonna dress like sure. Zorro. I dress like Zorro. But I'm gonna call myself Snorro. Well, you shouldn't dress like Snor You shouldn't dress like Zorro. You should dress like you're in a nightgown, or not like a nightgown, but like you like pajamas, like matching pajamas, and like have that as the mask, and have like a little like bedtime cap. You know what I'm saying? 
Right, but he should have some Zorro in him, don't you? He can have a cape. That's a good idea. And he can have an S on his chest for Snorro. Snorro. But he shouldn't look like Snorro. That's the whole point. Is he's look like Zorro? Zorro. He's Snorro. So what's what does he have instead instead of a sword? A pillow. Uh, a cane. Nah. Um. What's nighttimey? A reading? Uh, I don't know. Because the sword is like vigilante, but Snorro is supposed to be like. Yeah, but Snorro, Zoro would leave the Z. Z, 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 Zoro. Well, wouldn't Z, Snorro technically Z, also Z. leave Zs because he'd be sleeping? Well, that's what I'm saying. So what's he leaving it with? I mean, we could give him a sword. Nah. Snorro doesn't have a sword. What Snorro do you know is carrying around a sword? Well, I'm the only Snorro. Exactly. And are you carrying around a sword? I could, as but, Snorro. But do you? No. no exactly. But I'm, I'm not actually Snorro. Case closed. I'm not actually. Case closed. I'm playing a character. Case closed. Character. Case closed. I'm playing Case a character. Closed. Oh. No way. I didn't even mean to hit the table. Well, wait, wait. Why does it say off the key? Because it's that. Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, I apologize. That's my fault. That is correct. Oh, nice. Yes. I didn't fuck it up. Not for the whole thing. That'll be funny, though. We'll keep that in there. Uh, it's still going. Look, it's still going. We're still good. Nothing happened. Nobody has any idea what happened. You don't even have any idea what happened. Listen. I just fixed everything. It's precarious, the whole situation. Now nah, you're all right. But without a doubt, I'm right about Snorlax. Character. Or I mean... <laughs> it's close what I meant to say. Yeah, but you didn't because yeah. the truth came out of your mouth. Nah. Yeah. Anywho. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we were – that was Brisbane. Dude, but, I think Snorro is going to sweep the nation and be like, I bet you I could sell a zillion Snorro masks. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make them weighted – weighted eye masks because that's what I like. And it's going to have the Z on them. Or the Z or the S for Snorro. One giant S or the straight Z. I bet you there's one with Zs across it already. You know, you're, what you're talking about, weighted sleep masks with eye holes are already a thing. Yeah, but not from Snorro. And mine's going to come scented like lavender, and it's going to come with the mariachi band. Where? Huh? Does the mariachi band come in the package? Yeah. You, whenever you order the mask, the... Mariachi band comes along with it. You should, you should make the mariachi band deliver it. I can't decide what I'm, what I'm going to do to make Snorro's mask unique, except the fact that Snorro will be selling it. Other than that, I need to really work in it. You have a lot of things to work out in that. Do I? I mean, it seems pretty straightforward, Snorro. Does it, though? It seems pretty straightforward, but how many – you have so many – can't. there's a lot of corners you can't cut. I don't even know what you mean by that. What do you mean there's a lot of corners I can't cut? There are so many things you have to figure out with that. Like what? Whether it's already a thing, whether it's well, copyrighted. Okay, stop, whether stop, it's stop, stop, stop. For sure, sleep masks are a thing. There are no Snoros. Okay, answer your first two. How do you know? I looked up Snoro. Did you, though? Yeah, not really. Yeah, I knew you were just saying that for the but, camera. But but I'm <laughs> almost positive nobody is dumb like me and has been like, Snoro. It's pretty easy to come up with. Yeezy? Snorro, Snorro and Zorro are very close to one another. Yeah, but like, okay. Why are you, gonna, why are you always poo-poo on my parade? I'm not poo-pooing on your parade. You I'm do. Just, I'm going to Google it right now. You should Google it. Snorro. Two R's? Of course. Snorro, two masks. Two, Zorro had two R's. Oh, did it? I didn't know that. Yeah, Snorro cast? Well... Snorro, Snorro, TV program. <laughs> Since wait, doesn't it say Dick Van Dyke was in it? Yeah, Snorro was like, uh, 
Oh, that's how they did that. In the Netherlands. So we're fine. Yeah, dude. The Legend of Snorro the Dwarf. That is amazing. Snorro on Apple Music. Fandom myth. Snorro, father of Venerin, is a motor dwarf. We're good, dude. There's Snorro no, on Spotify. There's no, there's no Snorro. You man. didn't turn the masked this. hero Snorro. Ha ha ha! Snorro is a cheerful and visual theatrical spectacle. Of many, no, that's not it. Good. We're in good shape. Huh? We're in good shape. You want to show everybody the, the Adventures of Snorro and the Keepers from Sleep? Mm, that seems Bang. more like it. Bang. Damn it! Well, Snorro. Uh, I'll have to figure it out. But it looks like he's in the Netherlands. And that's I don't think I'm Look, not trying to I'm not trying to poo-poo on anyone's parade. I'm just being realistic on the things you just have to know before you try and I guess invent something. By the way, we've only gotten through one city in thirty minutes. I don't even think we got through it. Yeah, we did. I mean we did one show. You got to eat at Nando. Oh, I fucking love Nando's, holy shit. It's Nando. It's Nando's. Nando's is fucking it's delicious. Not Nando is, the, is like the white dude. It's Nando. It's, so many people in Australia are white? Yeah, but that doesn't mean that's how you're not supposed to pronounce it. It's Nando's. You don't say Melbourne. No, it's Melbourne. It's Nando's. That's not even close to the same thing. It is exactly. because Just because you're in a different spot doesn't mean it's pronounced differently. It's Nando's. Okay. Literally anybody I've ever asked that says Nando's. Oh, who? Anybody in London, in the, oh, listen, in the UK, it's, in it's, Australia, I'm like, oh, I went to Nando's. And they're like, oh, Nando's is great. And the response is always Nando's. Hispanic Nando's. place. Nando's. A Nando's. in Hispanic is A. Ah, Nando's. 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 Okay, if you want to be a gringo, you Nando's. can be. Nando's. I think you're being a gringo just trying to make it sound like something that's not. Nando's. Right now, you're just talking to yourself. <laughs> no, I'm talking to you. The Nando's was talking to myself. Definitely. All right. Where else did we eat there? What else did we do? You had. We walked. He over. finally figured out his coffee. Oh, no, you didn't figure that out until. Yeah, not until later. Yeah. I, but, but, I, but I. We just walked around, dude. We walked, like, because there wasn't a whole lot to do, do. We went to the botanical gardens. You know, I went across the river. And I walked yeah, that I that we almost went to that oh that cowboy bar and had you ride the mechanical oh, Ringo's. But mm, I was something just like that. Too fucking tired. Yeah, we were wiped out. Also it didn't open till like five or six PM. So I would have gone and done it in the middle of the day, but it wasn't open. So. I really wanted to see you get on that mechanical bull. Have you ever been on one of those? Yeah. We rode that mechanical shark at uh, David Ortiz's house that one time. Oh, that's right. I did. I've ridden a mechanical bull at Saddle Ranch once before that as well. I sat right on my nuts when I did it. What the Saddle Ranch or the Saddle Ranch? No, I haven't been back on one of those things. I'm not wearing the proper underwear ever, but it feels like, or my nuts are too long at this point. You might be a little too old for it. But it feels like when you go up, your nuts do this, and then you go like that. Yeah, that's an old person thing, I think. Yeah, I mean, look, they don't do like that, but, you know, they separate a little bit. I mean, yeah, that happens to everybody, but it's just a matter of keeping your body weight distributed. So you're not sitting on your nuts every time. Yeah, but I can't control my nuts when I'm in midair. Probably figure out how to. Nobody can control their nuts in midair. Says you. Huh? You heard me. Yeah. I mean, don't, I, don't make me Google that, too. Trying to see what his Google history will be after this. Okay. I mean, listen. But it's not the first time I've gone into your Google search history and seen something weird. That's true. Yep. My Google search history isn't like weird sex stuff. It's just really weird stuff. Yeah. That's it. It's not It's not anything sexual, actually. It's just weird. Like the last time – I won't even get into it. There was one time we were at dinner, and I went and I was like, hey, look something up on your phone. Because my mom and him always made me leave my phone in my room for dinner. Yeah. Because there were like no phones at the dinner table. Except mine. Except for my mom and my dad got to have their phone at the dinner table because they were working at 8 p.m. Whatever. Um, and there was one thing I went to look up on his phone. And I'm looking at his phone. And the first thing that popped up was poop in pool. That was it. I gave him back his phone after that. To be fair, there was a reason – 
what I, don't, I Google. But I don't need that reason. Well, look, but the people listening might. I don't think look, so. Look, he scanned back and tell him the order in which I, I, I Google things. Well, the first one was how many people, how often do people poop in a pool? Because I was, honestly, I was, I had thought about a scene that made me laugh in a movie, and I was like, I wonder how often that's happened. The one after that said, who poops in the pool the most? I just wanted to know if there was a type of person. Like a demographic? Or yeah, like if there was an age a, or a, a gender type? Yeah, or, I didn't know if it was like, it's always people over the age of 70 or under the age of 10. I, I, feel, like it's pro- I feel like it's probably males under the, like boys under the age of 10. I would go, I'd go one step. I'd go boys under the age of 10 and then boys between the ages of 18 and 22. Why? Because they're gross. But that, I don't even know where that would be funny at a certain Point. Yeah, I know, but some guys are gross. I would, I, I knew dudes. Yo, dude, there was a guy that I went to college with. Is this the rhino guy? <sighs> no. Okay. There's a guy I went to college with who was playing football, and he went to fart in somebody's open locker. And he shit. Full on sprayed all over his gear and all over his. He's the same dude who flooded his suite because if he was in the shower and had to shit, he would just poop in the shower and smush it down the drain with his feet. Oh, yeah, dude. Why? Uh, Oh. Why is that what comes to mind? Well, I get, like, during COVID, when none of us had toilet paper after you had to shit, if you were rinsing your ass off in the shower, makes sense. I'm good with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cleanliness. Can I tell you why are you stuffing a full hard shit with your feet down your shirt? Can I tell you? I've told a couple people that, and I'm not saying a lot of people, but more people than I'm comfortable with have been like, yeah, I know somebody used to do that. Why? Why is that your guys' thoughts? I don't understand that. I don't understand. I don't understand dudes. I'm a dude and I don't understand dudes. But this is what I'm talking about. But I will say this about you, dude. One of the interesting things about you that was so starkly different from me. I can poop anywhere? Not about poop. Oh. I it's, just felt it felt it felt like it was coming. From you that. can though. Holiday parties, friends' houses, oh, court parties. Dude, that holiday party. Side, side of the road. Fucking Liz's house. Hey, if I if, if it's gotta be done, it's gotta be done. Dude, there ain't no shame in that. That holiday party at Liz's house, you Bummer wrecked that bad. I came out of the bathroom and like checked, like looked both ways like I was crossing the road to make sure there were no witnesses. And then I came into the kitchen and guess who was standing there? Hey, there were witnesses because you were in there long enough where like four different people were like, is somebody in the bathroom? And I was like, I don't know. I didn't want to rat you out. Good man. Yeah. And but- then I came out of the bathroom and he was standing in the kitchen and he was like, mm, rough one. I left the door open too. You Dude, won. you were like the more guy from Motel Six. You left the lights on. Oh well, yeah. Oh Always. man, it was sizzling back there. But what I was saying about you is this: this is how you've been different from me. Um, you know, you weren't like the typical guy that I grew up with in high school. You were never. I'm not a bro guy. You were never somebody who liked to sit around and and look, you would sit around and make fun of each other. Or, you know, I'm gonna say this about you, and because I say about you, and we're guys, you just gotta laugh it off. And like that was never. You were never. I like you, so I'm gonna insult you, guy. That was not. Uh, I mean, not like right up front, but. Don't get me wrong. Me and my friends fuck with each other, of like one hundred percent. But I feel like that happened more as we grew up than it did when we were eighteen. But we still, we still gave each other a lot of shit. Also, unfortunately, you weren't there on the weekends a lot when we were all shooting the shit because yeah. you were touring. So I would say you probably didn't see the most of it. But yeah, no, we we gave each other shit all the time. Okay, and still do. Well, the ones that I'm still with. 
Yeah, dude. You, I'll tell you something else, man, I, which I really respect about you, is you've had some friends who you felt like weren't good friends. And you yeah. were like, I don't need you around anymore. And I, I held on to those people longer than I should have uh, just because I was, I don't know, it was scary. But you, if you feel like you give 100% to a friendship and somebody else isn't returning it, you have no problem with being like, yeah, I don't need you in my life anymore. Yeah. There was only one person that I have always had a little more trouble with that, that, uh, that concept, but then eventually started to realize that that's just who they were and just kind of had to accept it because you had that conversation with me about somebody in your past who was the same way, who you didn't speak to for a long time. Um, and then at a certain point you were like, I'm just, I know who this person is as a person. I had to stop expecting them to go above and beyond when I know they're not gonna. It was my dad. He was like, he asked me about this dude and I go, I'm not talking to him. And he was like, why? And I told him, you know, he did this, he did this, he did this, he constantly does this. And my mm -hmm. dad was like, he's always done that. And I was like, yeah, but and he was like, so don't put him in those positions. Like, do you like hanging out with him? Do you miss hanging out with him? And I was like, yeah. Do you miss him as a friend? Yeah. And so why do you keep putting him in a position to fail? Just if you like this part of him. I saw that on your face too. Yeah, if you, if you like this part of him then just stay in this lane. Yeah. But not everybody has to be everything. And it's actually your fault if you're mad at him for continuously putting him in a position where you know he's going to do something. I, that's gonna that one. I, mean, I appreciate it. Yeah. That one but he was so bad. right, man. He was so right. Yeah. And uh, when you told me that, it helped me out. Um, that buddy for me was Jackson. Um, Jack was just a free soul. So yeah. it was hard to – tether him or control him. He just kind of did whatever came to his mind. And that was just something you had to, uh, you had to accept. So a lot of times I find when you're mad, it's just because of something that you can't control, but it's your, it's almost like your fault that you're getting upset about it. Yeah. You're mad because the world around you isn't behaving the way you want it to. Mm -hmm. And you, that's none of your business. Look, man, if I could control the world, I'd be rich. Do you know what I'm saying? If I could control the world I around me, I would, I would be rich. But you can't. So, well, if you could control the world, your first thing would be would be. Being I don't rich. even want to control the world. Well, look, here's the thing: if I have all the money in the world, I can control the world. Doesn't matter. Money rule. Money runs the world. And if I have all of it, then I run the world. Yeah, but is that? Do you really want to run the world? No, I just want money. I just want to be rich. That's it. Do you want to be famous? Is that important to you? If I had the choice between being rich or famous, I'd rather be rich. A hundred percent. Not even close. It's not, not even – it's not even close. Not like uh, there's no competition for it. People are like, oh, but famous and everybody knows you. I'm like, great. Then go out and have Yo, go out and have lunch. Go out with your kids. Go to the park. I'll tell you what's rough is being famous and not having money. Yeah. You, are, you ask the people who used to be in the public eye, what about that dude who used to be on the Cosby show, man? And what, the rapist still coming? Hold on one second. Oh, let me just go ahead. The guy used to be on the Cosby show and ended up, you know, not acting anymore. And he was working at a Trader Joe's in New Jersey or some shit. I used to see this dude at the park, at Beaver Park. But he ended up moving out of LA and somebody took a picture of him and posted him on social media. Like, this was years ago. Basically about like oh, how the mighty has fallen or look at this dude from the Cosby show. It's hard shaming this dude. Like, yo, he doesn't work in Hollywood anymore. He doesn't have money anymore. He's just got a job. And that somehow like he's lesser. It's hard to be famous yeah. to have been in the public eye and then not be who you used to be. It's yeah. got to be difficult. Also, shame on the dude who tried to shame him on social media because he was like, look how the mighty fall or this and that. Hey brother, you were never mighty in the first place. There's no reason for you to be posting that about somebody hey, else. I mean, I don't, I don't remember exactly. But you, you, but you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. that dude used to be famous and now he's not. So the dude who was never famous takes the time out of his day to make fun of him. I mean, it I is funny to me. Ridiculous. It is funny to me. Like it's funny to me to hear people take pot shots. Like, you know, I'm buddies with this dude, Will Compton, who does a podcast called Will Busting with the boys. And Taylor. Woo. And uh, and Will I think played eight nine years nine years in professional you're, football. Year ten, possibly XFL. Okay, 
And so, yo, dude, was he ever the star? No. Was he ever the dude? No. And I hear people talk about, you know, your fucking, your D-list football career. Yo, motherfucker. To be in the NFL puts you at the 1% of people who have ever tried. 1%. He played nine seasons. 1%. Nine seasons. And then to hear people like, you fucking middle of the road, you bench warmer. Yo, dude, just to get on that bench. Yo. You got to be 1% of the 1%. Yeah. My favorite one is like, my favorite thing has always been, it's like there's this great video of Brian Scalabrini, for those of you who don't know, the white mamba who used to play for the Celtics. And this dude used to go to a pickup gym all the time. I pick up like, just at a gym all the time to shoot around. And people would bust his ass. Be like, yo, you're trash. Like, you're a bench warmer. Like, I'll bust you, this and that. And he'd be like, yo, lace up. Scalabrini would not let them score one point. Because here's the thing, and what you don't understand, there are 12 people on an NBA bench. That is it. Yeah. To be one of those 12 out of the 32 teams, you are literally, I don't care if you're on the bench, you're still one of the best basketball players in the world, dude. And for people to not understand that, it's like they're a bench warmer. Yeah, bro, they're still in the NBA though. He'll still bust your ass. Like, in the world, I'm gonna say, ever, guys, think about the amount of people that play basketball every year. You're 12 out of 32. 12 times 32 is 320 plus 64 is 384. 84. 384 players. Is that it? Pretty nuts. And they're one of those people on the court every day, practicing with the team every day, getting up shots with the team every day. And Crazy. guess what? Still getting paid every day. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. So I, I never understood that. Like when we, when we watched the Celtics and the Cavs play, and they were watching a, a Cavs player take a free throw, the Cavs were busting the Celtics asses back when LeBron was still playing. Yeah. And he was like, oh, Oh, you suck out there in the free throw line. This guy's just like throwing back beers. And I remember looking at you going, Isn't it crazy? Isn't it crazy just being a drunk civilian in the stands at a basketball game, yelling at an athlete who makes millions of dollars a year, telling him he sucks? How crazy of a life that is. Yeah, I it's just you, so strange to me. I used to make sure to clap back at everybody who said some shit to me online. It's not worth it. Dude. But also, like, I started thinking about it. Like, when people are like, you fucking, you D-list. Yo, man. I'm happy to be on a list. I was going to say, still on a list. Guess who's not? I'm happy to be on a list. And here's what I've understood and what I've helped. I've had a lot of talks with comics who are fucking depressed, man. And successful dudes and women. And I, and I say the same thing. Like, out of all the people who have ever done it, if you get, like, here's what I know about. And I'm far and away from one of the most successful people that have ever done this. But I'm also... This took a like a long time. Yo, dude, I'm in the one percent of people who have ever tried this. Mm -hmm. It's perspective, man. Yeah, it's all Absolutely. perspective, dude. You know, and so I like it makes me laugh now when I read some of the chat. I will say I clap back every now and then. Yeah, you have to. You have to have some fun with it every now and then. Like if there's a, just a joke that just lines up and you just can't, you can't. You know, you're gonna go for the joke sometimes. I'll, I will say the people get they get in their feelings real quick when you clap back. Oh, I was just kidding and this and that. Yo, keep, what? keep that same energy. Yeah. That energy huh? <laughs> like when we were when we were just in Nashville. By the way, we were talking about Australia, and now we're on Nashville. When we were just in Nashville last weekend. There was somebody who tried to ask a question from the background, and it kind of got stepped on. And we were like, "What was that? What'd you say?" Silence. And on the stage, I was just like, "Yeah, man, go ahead, and keep that same energy when I ask you to repeat your question." Dude, it's Nashville like, was. Nashville's crazy. Nashville. We'll be back there on April 16th for another Bonanza Extravaganza. Yes. But Nashville was – dude, the shows – like last night, all the shows individually are different and fucking so yeah. – that dude who hopped on stage – in Nashville to do his Michael Jackson impersonation. Well, with the moon step and not the moon walk? Dude, it was so funny. What about the dude who asked to give you a hug in Cincinnati? Or Salt Lake? Or what was that? One of Salt, Salt Lake. Lake. It was right after that woman asked you if we knew what bagpiping was. We Yeah. Oof. That is not what I thought bagpiping was, was having somebody have sex with an armpit. It sounds terrible. What? Like, I don't even know where that's where you guys go. Like, like what? How does that simulate? I don't know. 
But what is the who? First of all, who thought of it first? Why abstinence? I mean, maybe it they, is a Mormon thing. They made a joke about it on Family Guy where people have sex in the ear. Yeah, I mean, it could be a you Mormon black, thing. You go deaf. Hey, you think that's what it is? I mean, maybe. Ah, because it was happening at BYU. So people are having sex with the armpits because it's because you can't get you can't get pregnant with the armpit. But like that's really only pleasurable for maybe one person. Maybe. I don't think it is. I'm not getting past the funny part. No, and also if you're like, hey, you want a hand job or to fuck my armpit, I'm taking a hand job. Like, why am I why am I trying to have sex with an armpit? Well, I will say this. If I could get past the funny part, I don't know that the armpit's any worse than the hand. I mean the armpit probably is <laughs> depends if it's a girl who knows how to drive stick shift or not. Do you know what I'm saying? Like she's trying to learn how to drive stick shift for the first time. It's like Yeah, but the armpit seems like you could I don't know. I don't know how comfortable I am having the rest of this conversation with you. I think, okay, <laughs> I'll just say this. Logistically, the armpit makes me laugh. Right, so. Well, like, wh- how I'm doing it, like, I'm going to have to Google it. Gross. I will not be there for that. I will for sure look at a video and I'll report back. Please don't. But okay. Um, what were we talking about prior to all that? We are talking about. Nashville, how crazy the show were shows were. We were talking. We, we, oh, right. we started with Australia on this podcast. Oh, though. Brisbane, Bing Bang Boop, fantastic trip. Sydney was next. Sydney, we were there for sixteen hours. Yeah, it was a pretty quick trip. We there was it was the shows were great. That dude you met out front who was t- taking acid. And, no, 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 that was. Oh no, that was Sydney. You're right. You're right. Yeah, that he was that, he was, had that like was a corn cob. Uh, like Bro a, had a Mad Hatter hat on. There was like a legit playing card in the front of it. Said he had taken some acid, and then tries to hand me a bottle of Patron, but it's like the the cafe Patron, so it's like the coffee one. Yeah, and and he, he was like, in at the show too. Yeah, and then he was like, "Yeah, and there's a little gin in there," and I was like, "Is there acid in the tequila?" And he was like, "No," and I go, "I still pass." And his buddy was sitting there who was super high, and his buddy had MS. It was a really interesting duo. I'm yeah, not going to lie. Like, I really enjoyed the balls. Tripping from. balls. And then we drove off in our Uber, and the Mad Hatter was peeing in a bush. It was pretty great. But yeah, it was, it was a good – I wish we had more time in Sydney. Last time I was there, we went to the Opera House, we yeah. the zoo, and all that shit. I did my very first two minutes in Sydney. Three minutes, four minutes on stage by myself. Yeah, you did five minutes probably. I opened for him, which was pretty cool. That was awesome. Yep, we did that. So yep. I have that in my, yep. my resume now. Um, that was, for me, maybe the highlight of that. Although I love that hotel, dude. What hotel did we stay at again? The Porter, the, 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 the one with that weird gym. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. we were there for 16 hours. Yeah, we were there for a very short period of time. Yeah, I, well, we did have that um, liver pate. Oh, right? my God. Was that Sydney? Yeah. We, I had, what is it called? The, for those of you who don't know, there's a croque monsieur and there's a croque madame. So they're two French sandwiches. Uh it's pretty much just like an extra, extra, extra cheesy ham and cheese. It looked delicious. You had some. I had some, but yeah. We split it. Yeah, it was good. He also ordered a chicken liver parfait. Pate. It looked like it said parfait. I'm pretty sure it did. Parfait is like a, a yogurt. yogurt. I know. That's why I thought it said parfait. Because it came with the same little thing that they serve parfaits in too. Huh. I think it said parfait. I think it said pate. Anywho, he goes to eat it and I go, you're not going to like that. He goes, but I hear it's really good for you. And I was like, okay. He takes one bite and he goes, mm, I don't know if I like that. Proceeds to take another bite just to make sure his taste buds had tasted it right. And then he looks at me and goes, mm, you know what? Kind of tastes like dog shit. Proceeds to take three more bites. Can I say this? Just to make sure it tasted like dog shit. That's not why. I have this OCD where if it's in front of me, I got to eat. And I don't know if I was growing up with not a lot of money. Or or with three older brothers, so you had to eat quickly, also. or a combination of the two. But I'm just not good at leaving it on the plate. No, he's not. He's terrible at it. I'm I'm a clean plate club dude. Yeah, I, it depends on what the clean plate is. It depends on what's on the plate in the first place. You know what I'm saying? I have never been ashamed or too often to be like, yo, I didn't like that. I'm not going to eat the rest of that. I know. I've never, I've never been ashamed of that. You know what else I love about you? Your mom and I have talked about before. Yo, this guy 
will if you look if you go to the restaurant and by the way I, I love that you have this confidence I really do because when I was growing up one of the things that I hated is if you were going to take me to a restaurant I get to eat what, what I want don't say you can't order this and this well then take me to a restaurant where I can open it up and order anything I want to order yeah yeah that's that's the way I look at it like it always made me feel bad that you were highlighting the things. Right? right. So I was like, I'm not gonna do that. If I'm gonna take my kids somewhere, they can I can afford to get them whatever is on the menu. And then we'll step up, you know? Yeah. And but this dude, yo, you take this guy out to a nice steak restaurant, you know what he's getting? A fucking steak, dog. A real nice one. A fucking steak. Yeah. Like, look, I'm not gonna go ahead and order the $150 tomahawk steak because I'm not gonna finish it. However, I will order a nice fillet. Yo. I'm not going to order the giant tomahawk. You said I'm not going to order the giant tomahawk, not because I don't want it to cost too much, just I because I won't finish it. <laughs> They're usually like 40 ounces. I'm not eating a 40-ounce steak. You threw me for a loop-to-loop. -loop. I thought you were going to be like, I'm not going to make you pay for that. Yeah, I just I can't finish it. I was hungry enough. Yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> and we did one night. Well, actually, in Sydney, we ordered that 40-ounce tomahawk steak and split it. No silverware. Yeah, we ate that shit off the bone with our hands like cavemen. Yeah, no silverware. And then we asked for silverware from the comedy club, and they gave us a wooden knife. Yeah, they <laughs> the were wooden prepared. knife. I know, but the wooden knife was so crazy to me. I'm like, you guys don't have, like, knives you cut limes with? And by the way, not cutting a steak with your wooden knife. It broke the knife. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it wasn't that we couldn't. Is that we – or wouldn't. It's that we literally could not. That tomahawk was good. Should we order one tonight, by the way? That shit was fire. That tomahawk Should we, we order one tonight? Oh, that's the – that filet was really good that we had last night. Or that I had last night. Is that what you want? I like it again. I'm going to try that crispy pork belly for next week. I'm on a strict – Oh, also what our biggest thing was when we were there. In Sydney? And just uh, – whenever we were, if you saw crispy pork belly, you were on it. Oh, my man. I was on a pork belly kick. Yo, there was a pork belly we had, though. That was – that was – Melbourne, because one? the the best hotel right hotel meal we've ever had in our entire Ugh. life. But that's where we are, by the way. So we were just in Sydney. We did a show. I opened up. We saw the Mad Hatter. We flew out the next day. Yeah, we ended up in Melbourne. We get to Melbourne. We're about to go out for lunch, and I was like, "We're in. We're literally in the elevator." And I look up, and it says, "There's like this sign that says, Yo, restaurant on the 25th floor, yes. brand new.'" And I look at the screen, and I'm pretty sure the appetizer I see on the screen is a picture of pork belly. By the way. We, Jacob and I, got on a pork belly kick in Portland. Oh, sh sh yo. You know what's crazy is how much, because I'm. It's so crazy. How much bigger you look right now because I'm kind of slumped down. Well, I also sat up because I felt myself slouching. Yeah, this is like. So I sat up. Look at this. Dude. But this is how we look when we're standing next to each other. No, it isn't. When we're standing next to each other? Look at that. I'm way taller than you. Look at that. Standing. You're I'm, like, also, I'm also still kind of slouching. No, you're not. You're sitting on this. It's See, if I'm standing straight up, I'm standing straight up with the same side. That's what I'm saying. But I was down like this. Look, we're the same. Now I'm bigger than you. Yeah, I was like this. But not. But but you sit up straight. And I'm still Stop leaning forward. <laughs> stay back. I'm still stay, stay back. <laughs> now we can see. Yeah. Why is my back against back against that? <laughs> Stop it! Um, but yeah, so we've been on a pork belly kick since Portland. Um, oh, this do was, you remember the name of the place in Portland? It's this giant hotel. There's a restaurant. Flanookers. That sounded not Flu nice. Flanooker. Flu Flu you should take the N out of that and stop saying that. Um, Nookers. There you go. That's what I'm saying. Um, Isn't it Flanookers? No, this no, 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 no. Absolutely not. It was in a really, it was a really nice hotel. It's in the top floor. Um, I'd have to look it up. It's definitely not what you think it is. Yeah, it doesn't. I don't know why you named your restaurant Flo Nokers. I don't know why you. I don't even know how that came into your mind. Yeah, I was a little off with that one. I think. Um, but so we got into this. We got into Melbourne, and the Australian Open was Melbourne. Melbourne. Then the Australian Open was also in Melbourne while we were there. So we had a lot of people who were staying in our hotel. Some of my night. favorite shows. Yo, I got to put out this clip of these people breaking up at our show. Yeah, we do. We're still going to talk about that meal we just had. That's what we're talking about. Oh, the pork belly. And not only that, what about the, the guys 
who worked at the lounge, yo, who ate the muffins. Yo, so first of all, this meal that we had at this restaurant at the hotel restaurant got to be no joke the best hotel meal I've had anywhere. Yeah. In any country, in any because state. The lamb was good too. So was the Wagyu burger that I had. It was yeah. crazy. Like like truly truly and the pork belly itself. No words. No, no words. Giant pieces like it it was the best hotel meal I've had anywhere. <sighs> like no joke. I don't think there's anything that comes close to it. No, it's pretty good. I mean, also not including the one in Portland, though, because we didn't stay in that hotel, so it doesn't count. Um, it's funny though; we had we hadn't been there for a year. We came and sat at the same two seats in the bar, and the same bartender was there. He was like, "What's going on, guys?" And we were like, "Oh, hey!" And he was like, "Oh, nice to see you again." I go, yeah. "You remember us?" He goes, "Of course we remember you." And I was like, "That's crazy," but so, but so Melbourne was legit. Dude. Those shows that night were. Absolutely outstanding. That comedy lounge was so much Insanity. fun. Insanity. Somebody cooked us the tastiest blueberry ish muffins. They were crumble. It was like a crumble blueberry. Oh, the ones that were infused? 600 milligrams. Yo, they smelled so good. They smelled so good. So it was like a crumble blueberry. Oh, like this but, person was an expert bait. But by the way, let me put it this way. I knew they were going to be strong because the the blueberry or the muffins were still kind of green. Yeah, that's how you knew that them. those motherfuckers were going to be. Yeah, bust it. Yeah. Oh my yeah, yeah, yeah. god! But so we bring them out, and we're like talking to the staff and whatnot. And the staff was like, "Do you mind if we grab some?" I go, "We can't fly with it." So like, yeah, of course. Like y'all have some, and they start. There's like four big ones and like four little ones. And this kid looks at me and he goes, well, I'm from Chile is what he said. And he said, my jet lag is killing me. So I just need something that's going to put me to bed. I go, well, hold on. We we don't know how much is in each one of those. He goes, fuck it. Then the rest of the staff also grabs one. He ate the small one. And we had a buddy who drove us home and his friend ate one of the big ones. We got a message later that night from the people who gave us the uh, the muffins. And she said, the small muffins – had 400 milligrams in them. By the way. By the way, 400 is a lot. And it's a lot if you're not expecting 400. Yeah. Because I'm sure he was like max 100. Yeah, me too. That's what I was expecting. 400 when you're not expecting 400. Plus is... he had taken acid and was drinking. No, he ate the 600 milligram one. Oh. oh. The, the, the kid from Chile who worked at the, who worked at the store or worked at the lounge. lounge. Ate a 400 milligram one. I didn't get an update on him. Dude. But we did get an update on our buddy who ate a 600 milligram one who was on acid for the 12 hours prior to that, also drinking. And then something else. I think it was something sort of with a uh, – I don't remember what it was. But I got updates and pictures from his buddy. And then I got an update from Ock himself, who was the dude who took the, the muffin. And he was like, yo. And I was like, dude. 600 milligram surprise. And he was like, that was one hell of a surprise. Oh, He's like, I've been throwing up for like three hours. You're going like, to be high for a long time. You're going to be high after you're done being sick too. Yeah, That's the gonna, crazy part. You're going to be like, high for a long time. Yeah, yeah. That, that was that was nuts. It like, was a great trip. And then we went – I went – And then we had some clothes at this place, guys. I've been trying to, to branch out a little bit. It was a very – it was a unisex store. It was – you could like, – the men could wear the women's yeah. clothes. The women could wear the men's clothes. Was, and I bought a couple of things in there, and I, I've gotten more play. I'm like, I'm like, ah, maybe I'll never – you know what I, I wear? I wear both of those more than I wear that thing that I got in New Zealand that I thought I was going to wear the pants and the jacket. You haven't worn that at all yet. I've worn the jacket twice, but I'm not – the so, pants. I'm telling you, bro, that fit, if you wear it together with like just a plain white tee is – I'm a little. I just feel a little too old to wear those together. I should have tried on that purple one. I'm, I've, I've had a feeling though. Had I tried on that light purple one, I would have bought it. You mean I would have bought it? That's what I mean. <laughs> that's why I didn't. That's why I didn't. Uh, that's why I didn't try it on. You're welcome. Uh, all right, listen. And now we're on New Zealand, but I don't know if we have time for that. No, we don't. But and we can do another one eventually. We will. And we didn't really get into <coughs> Melbourne, but except to say that I want to go back. Yes, very bad. I Great love stores. the kind of New York feel, the alive. I love everything cool city. about it. Really cool city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I will definitely be going back as well. I definitely <laughs> want to go back to just spend like a week there. That's where like, – if I had to choose a city that we went to to go back and hang out, it would be Melbourne. All right, sure. everybody. Listen, ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates. He's on all the tour dates. 
Come say what's up. Come say what's up. These shows have been selling out. Listen to me. The goal is theaters this year for us, guys. Indeed. And when I say us, look, I mean us. Like, a lot of you guys have been with me a long time. A long time. And this has this slow build. You guys are an essential part of. True. Know me without you. And so, you know, we were in Nashville. And in, um, instead of standing at the merch table, I went out in between shows because there was a line that went around the building. Mm-hmm. And just said hello and shook hands with everybody who was in the line. Because it's been, it's a, I, I've become acutely aware of, like, your effort in this also. Mm-hmm. So thank you all so much. It's like I, I, I'm overwhelmed, man. I really am overwhelmed. And I am reinvigorated with joy for doing this. So much of it is having Jacob with me now. Uh, but if you notice, I've been posting some things with my daughter who's starting to get involved and my oldest son and obviously Beth. And so... Uh, right now, the best chapter. So come yep. out. And and we've never been better on stage. This dude's That's funny, true. man. We have never been better. So, And it's only going to get better. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So, nothing else to say to that. Um, all right. Thank you. ComedianJoshua.com for tour dates. Joshua jo- Comedy on Instagram and Twitter as well. I don't use Twitter anymore. Me either. But Instagram, Tiki Taki, and Facebook. Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. It's Jake Wolf on TikTok. Twitter is... We should change you to Jake Wolf Comedy. We'll talk about that. You want to? I don't know. I mean, we can't. But I figured until I'm opening for you, I'd still just be Jake Wolf. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Which will be happening hopefully sometime in the future. Um, Not hopefully. Will be. Yeah. Um, That's it. Come see what's up. Providence. Two more shows tonight. Two more shows tomorrow. I already saw that. Exactly. I wasn't, the, I wasn't going to promote tickets. I oh, was just saying we'll see you guys. The next week that has tickets available, guys. Winnipeg? Oh, there are some tickets left in Winnipeg. Canada, uh, come say what's up. It'll be my first 24th, time. 24th, 25th, 26th. And there are tickets still in Austin. Which will I'm be fun. Only doing two two nights, guys. 31st oh, and 1st. Friday, Saturday? Friday, Saturday. Huh. Nice. Okay. Um, I'm going to come into Austin a few days early. Gonna hop on Dr. Drew's podcast. Nice. Um, but yeah. Again, thank you guys so much. You probably hear it every podcast. Yeah. And um, we'll be on the road doing these pods until um until we get our studio. Which will hopefully be soon. So thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for stopping by. Don't forget also he has a YouTube page. Um, and go check that out. Uh, new clips as much as we can on TikTok and Instagram and all that. And we'll see you guys soon. Love you. Later.